So people have a vocabulary of behavior, things to do. On payday, you go out and get drunk, you get laid, then you go home and work the rest of the week. That's a habit. Now, very few people on payday rush to a bookstore and pick up a batch of books, and rush to an art supply store and pick up drawing materials, or go to a roller skating rink. You know, they don't have enough things. Now, if you can build a vocabulary of behavior whereby you have art supplies, Wednesdays you go roller skating, Thursdays swimming, then you go down to the bay sailing. I don't mean that you do all these things, but if you build enough of behavioral areas that are pleasant, when you destroy two, it's not enough to create a depression because you've got so many others. But if you keep saying, why didn't Virginia call me this week? She could have called me. And all day long you sit at the phone waiting <laughs> for Virginia to call you. Now that habit is only based on giving Virginia top billing. You know what that means in the movie industry, top billing? In the theater, top billing is the actor. If you give Virginia top billing and the fact that you're the best dressed man in town top billing, when somebody moves into town better dressed than you are, and Virginia go out, goes out with Sam, then you've been wiped out. You don't even have a barn. A horse has a barn. <coughs> so you don't have an emotional barn, okay? Now, there are other emotional barns which are burning. An emotional barn, when you run into depression, if you go out and get drunk, that's going into another burning barn. Because you're going to wake up with a hangover and the problem's still going to be there. Right? So think of how many emotional barns you've got that you go through that are burning. All right, here's the way you get out of it. You usually don't get out of a depression. But what you do is develop habits when you're not in a depression that are fulfilling. Other habits. Try moving around. Some people buy cookbooks, and they cook Spanish foods and French foods and green foods. And some people go to the cooking exhibitions and shows. You know, and some people spend time and they join the chef's club where they discuss things and somebody cooks and you taste it. I'm not suggesting that you do that. But there are people that have enough alternatives so the destruction of anyone doesn't leave them in midair. It, it, drama is a good thing, but drama doesn't always reinforce, except when you get a job. But drama could be very painful if you're an actor and you can't get a job. And you keep walking around telling everybody I'm an actor and I can't get a job. Says, is that right? Then you get pressed again. Now, here's this guy that wants to date women. He goes out and he can't get it. He can't make out with women. He can't relate to them. But he has to go out with women, and the depression is always follows the fact that you approach somebody and they say no. And you always wind up with depression. Rather than saying, well, what is it that people say no about? They say no about habits they don't identify with. If I went into a, a strict Baptist church and tried to date any one of the 90 available girls, they would all reject my point of view. And I would depress continually. Because I go to a Baptist church continually. And there are a lot of people that go to Baptist church continuously and wonder why they're depressed. So, you stick yourself into a zone where depression can be generated. Now, if you join up with a lot of people that are, have a low level value system, low grade value system, here's what that means. Usually occurs in an industrial plant where people without much training work. And one of, them, one of them says, there comes sloppy fingers Joe. You know what I mean? Because if you drop something one day, you hang a label on it. And uh, when you come in, say, what did you drop today? They're always coming at you, <laughs> enough to depress you. You know what I mean? So you keep going back to that burning barn because you don't go anyplace else. Now, to go someplace else, you don't know how to make contact with other people. Because they have, if you make contact only with hair silence, that's your world of conversation. Mm -hmm. But if you make contact with others, you can build other world contact. Now, depression. Like I said before, depression doesn't start here. It starts somewhere, by some signal. And what you have to do is like the engineers do, which I tried to describe yesterday. The engineer puts a propeller on an airplane, and then when he winds it up to a certain speed, it flies apart. That used to happen in the days. Scientists want to know how fast they can whirl a steel ball. So they put it on bearing, and they start to whirl it, and the whole goddamn ball flew apart at a certain speed. So another scientist says, make the ball smaller. And then it can go faster without falling apart because it doesn't have the same mass. And finally they wind up with a little BB about this size, which they spun at, I forget what it was, several million revolutions per second by an electromagnet. And when they turned it off, it took one year to stop spinning. <laughs> now, uh, they have to identify the problem that the thing flies apart. So when an airplane propeller flies apart, they don't know when to put it on an airplane, they put it on a test rack designed for flying apart the pellets. 
It's got a shield all around it. They're on a concrete wall. And they rev up that propeller until it, until it flies apart. If a normal airplane propeller turns at 3,000 revolutions per minute, they rev it up to 4,000. And if it still holds together, it says on the propeller, do not rev beyond 3,000. But they have a safety mark. They identify the problem and then give you a handbook of instruction. Do not keep your sewing machine out in the rain. Okay? They give you a handbook of instruction and say, identify the problem. Normal people that have problems say, I'm depressed. That's one part of the, of the problem. The next thing is, what makes me depressed? What makes me depressed? Then you have to identify one, two, three, four. Here's what makes me depressed. I act in a plan of guys that's why you should allow such a plan. Without you, it would have been terrific. So I'm sensitive to criticism. I, I just make a black mark there and write sensitive to criticism, to whatever the hell it is there. I get that down. This isn't dealing with a problem yet, but it's partly dealing with it. Next thing, the guy says to me, you and your big fucking fat shoes. In Florida, everybody wears white stuff. They, they have to press the shit on me. That's another form of criticism about dress. Another thing I can't stand is when I put my arm around a girl, she says, please. That's depressing. Uh, rejection. <laughs> no end. See, so I make that. Now I know what the areas are that depress me. At least I've identified them. But most people just feel depressed. And you say, what bothers you? And they say, I don't know. Just, I tell you, life isn't worth a shit. And they, they go on because they don't identify the problem. Now let's try it again. You put normal people non-psychological problems, mechanical, in the boat. Here they are. And say that they don't have any outside depression, so they like boats. You, in that boat, sees water squirting in from the You see water in the boat, and you see it squirting in from certain areas. You can identify quickly the position of a problem. The next thing is, you don't have any cotton to shove in that hole. There's nothing in the boat. So you cut off a piece of your shirt. And your wife says, I paid $9 for that shirt in the boat. <laughs> So you pull it out and put it back in your pocket, and you sink. You know what I mean? So there are times when a shirt has no value at all, except in that hole. You know, <laughs> since you can't swim a mile, you know, unless you can swim a mile. But if you're a mile offshore and you can't swim very well, fuck the shirt. Now, if you don't have a shirt, say you got bathing shorts, take your wife's bra and shove it in that hole. You know what I'm talking about? Well, did you? It's like the boy with his finger in the hole. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. right. Anything. Okay. So, this is problem solving because the problem is identified. You don't want water in the boat, and the water comes from this area, and the only way to do it is to plug up that area. One movie was Laurel and Hardy. They were both in a boat, and water started to come in. And Stan, the fat guy, it's thin guy, Stan, and Laurel, the fat guy, <laughs> he says to Stan, let the water out of the boat. And uh, my, so Stan pulls the cork out of the bottom of the boat. There's a cork in the bottom of most boats. So when you dry land it, you pull the cork out and let the water out. But in the water when you pull the cork out, so when the boat started to get more water, so you should pull out the other cork. And they pull out both corks. They, they, were, they were doing things that were not problem solving. There's a lot of friends you got when you have trouble with your wife and not getting along. They pull the cork out of the boat. Here's how they do it. They put their arm around and say, why don't you have children? That usually brings the marriage together. They're both at each other's throat. So they have children. Now they got the problems and the children. <laughs> and the relatives say, why don't you have another kid? <laughs> they have another kid. And so there are many people that comfort you with their arms and put you in the deeper hole. So the recognition of a problem is number one. And the answer is not the answer I give, <laughs> but the answer you find, whether it be roller skating, sailing, or other. You pick those areas and get busy in them. And then the depression doesn't disappear, but it's less. No.